the government committed itself to reviewing the crisis-ridden funding of social care with a new green paper shortly before Theresa May called the general election. Two new high-profile reports, however, highlight how difficult and far-reaching a task this is likely to be for whatever government comes into power in June. The present administration has had two major self-imposed constraints in relation to social care. Its commitment to maintaining austerity, minus style spending limits, and its ideological belief in the small state. However, as these reports suggest, this may be the biggest ever testing ground for such propositions and political parties contending for power may need to offer something very different if they want to make any real impact on the social care crisis. Pressure to do so is likely to increase as problems created by social care failure gain increasing visibility and priority. The simple truth is that such profound changes are taking place in UK and global demographics that current approaches to care can't keep pace with the rapidly rising numbers of older and disabled people in society. We are at risk of returning to poor law levels of neglect within people's own four walls and families or warehoused in old style institutions. This becomes clear from the evidence of the two reports. They offer a very similar critique of the problems austerity politics have built up for policy makers, the communities, and local government select committee report on adult social care published in March concluded that inadequate funding was having a serious impact on both the quality and level of care, and said a long-term fix was urgently necessary. The Institute for Fiscal Studies report on social care funding, published a few days later, similarly revealed a disastrous and unraveling mess, but it also paints a more complex picture than is usually offered, with significant differentials in local spend, and some councils making much bigger cuts than others, as well as double whammies resulting from welfare cuts. We can still expect the present administration to think it can paint its way out of this corner by pressing people to take more personal responsibility for their well-being. But there is little fit between such rhetoric and massively changing demographics, the increasing time people have to spend at work and the high and growing proportion of women, formerly family carers, having to be in paid work. Andrew Dilnett, whose 2010 Commission on Social Care Funding minus ignored by the coalition government minus rejected out of hand the idea of paying for social care through general taxation is now calling for a new tax to pay for it. But the select committee report goes much further minus further than any political party has since Margaret Thatcher first set social care in the hopeless direction it is now still lurching along. It has called on government to work with parties across the political spectrum in preparing a green paper on the long-term funding of social care. Even more groundbreaking, it says any discussions should proceed on the basis that all options, emphasis added, are on the table, including raising money from national taxation minus such as income tax national insurance or inheritance tax minus purely to pay for social care. This is the first time there has been such a recommendation to increase national taxes since Tony Blair kicked out such a proposal from the Sutherland Royal Commission on Long-Term Care in 1999. We now have arguably the most inefficient, cost-ineffective and personally damaging social care system in Europe. Fewer and fewer people are getting support, those who do tend to get less support. It is having major destructive effects on the NHS, and makes any short-term difficulty affecting an older person a crisis for them, their loved ones and local services.
It is difficult to see how the much vaunted goal of integration with health will ever be achieved so long as it is a residual means tested service. Instead, policymakers minus of all colors minus must at last explore thoroughly and impartially the real benefits as well as short-term financial costs of putting social care on the same essential footing as the NHS. As a universalist, free at the point of delivery service, paid for out of general taxation, social care has become too important a policy, too big an issue to duck any longer. However much short-termism has ruled in domestic politics, any forthcoming government green paper must respond to this challenge, or we will all of us be that much worse off for the foreseeable future. Join the Social Care Network to read more pieces like this. Follow us on Twitter, at NTSocialCare, and like us on Facebook to keep up with the latest social care news and views.